Catherine Hamm, Brian Wilson, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you. The Morning Marathi, 630. WMAL. 637 on WMAL. Coming up on the show, Katie McFarland joins us in less than a half hour from All now. Right. Talk to her at 706. Apparently, we got to check the 95-year-old people in wheelchairs with diapers, but, you know, if you've got a fake boarding pass. Yeah, this is an incredible story. <laughs> and you're from Nigeria and you want to fly across country. Not a problem. Not a problem. Yeah, come on through. Uh, a little bit of an issue last night with a flight from uh, New York to L.A., so we'll get into that with uh, Katie McFarland, Lanny Davis in the 8 o'clock hour. Also, Rick Santorum coming up, yeah, presidential candidate. Yeah. Talk with him at 736 this morning. John Felmy joins us now. He is the chief economist at the American Petroleum Institute, API. So, uh, John, as gas prices, they seem to be trending down, downward, certainly off their highs around 4 bucks a gallon at the pump. Do you see that downward trend continuing? Well, it's really going to be a function of what happens with crude prices. We have saw uh, over the past several weeks, crude oil prices have dropped about 45 cents a gallon from the high points, and gasoline has followed at 44 cents. So it's going to be what the world effects on crude oil is going to be is most likely uh, reason. All right. Uh, normally we see gas prices actually go up in the summertime. And why are we seeing it down? Is it solely because of the price of crude? It's really the cost of making the product. We, the reason why prices went up into May was because the cost of crude oil went up, the cost of ethanol, uh, credit card fees and taxes. And now that crude has come down, we've seen gasoline follow it. Well, let's talk a little about the president's decision recently to release a certain amount of oil from the strategic reserve. Other parts of the world did the same thing. Uh, did that have a real impact? Because it seemed that it, shortly after that, we did see the prices start to fall. Was that the reason, or it just happened to be good timing? Well, we did see about a $4 blip on the day of the announcement, uh, and that's consistent with what happened back in 2000 when Bill Clinton released uh, 30 million barrels. Uh, you know, it's good to see additional supplies coming online, and our argument is we've been arguing that for a long time, and what we really need to do is produce more oil for 30 years, not just 30 days. But when we see a big spike like we saw yesterday where oil jumps up dramatically, it generally follows that we see an increase in the price of gasoline. Is that something we should be on, on the lookout for and should plan for? Well, historically, the correlation is very high, but it's really a function of both the supply and demand for gasoline and, in turn, the supply and demand for crude oil, and those are different markets. Uh, you know, refiners uh, take what's the difference between those, and it's really a function of the market conditions. Um, when the president talks about spending in the tax structure, as he calls uh, <laughs> tax hikes, uh, what he wants to do, he talks a lot about subsidies for big oil. Um, I wonder what you think about that characterization and what taking uh, those sort of tax credits away would do to the ability to explore further and to, to create more energy sources. Well, that's really just a political mischaracterization. Uh, we get uh, tax treatment the way every other industry does, and uh, saying to single us out is simply wrong. You know, this was tried under Jimmy Carter when they raised the taxes, reduced production, and then uh, poured the money down the drain on things that didn't work. So let's not repeat that mistake. Let me ask you a nerdy question about oil that I've always wondered. You? Yeah. What is it Brent oil and crude oil, and there's like a big difference between the, the two prices? W what is that? And what, like sweet crude, what are the difference between those twos, and, and, and why why is there such a big difference why in price right care? now? Yeah. Well, there are two crudes that actually, in terms of their composition, are not much different. They're both relatively light sweet crudes, meaning they have low sulfur contents and they're easier to refine. Uh, but where they sold is, or where they are sold is different, and uh, the market conditions for the two have been separate. It's been relatively soft for the WTI, which is traded at Cushing, Oklahoma, versus Brent, which is more of a European blend. And because of the market conditions, you've had quite a divergence in price, which uh, historically they've been fairly close. All right, so sweet crude is easier to refine. Does that mean that's more valuable than the other kinds of oil? That's right. Uh, if you have less sulfur to take out, it's easier to refine. Okay, and do we find that oil more in in the Middle East than we do here in the United States or in North America? Well, it really varies by region. In particular, Libya was selling a lot of lighter, sweeter crude. Um, so it varies by country. Each individual country has uh, a portfolio of crudes that uh, vary, and you, you get some light and some heavy from virtually all countries. John, I, my question, I, I'm from the oil fields of West Texas. I grew up in Odessa, Texas, where a lot of oil 
oil has been drilled over the years, and so I have maybe a little bit different perspective of it. And it seems to me that we we still are not exploiting all of the natural resources that we have in this country. We're not drilling for the the, the oil that's out in the Gulf. We're not taking advantage of some of the places where we know there is oil, but we we for political reasons don't go after it. And yet, time and time and time again, it becomes a national security issue. All of a sudden, we see crude prices spike. We're at the at the whim of whatever OPEC comes up with on any given day, and yet we we have the ability to go out and get more oil in this country, and we don't do it. Is that because the regulations are so burdensome, and that the government will just not allow you to do what the free enterprise system normally lets you do? Go and 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 get the product out of the ground and sell it a good at a good price. That's absolutely correct. You know, we have a vast amount of oil in this country, well over 100 billion barrels that we think we can develop. And that would, if we were to develop, that would significantly reduce imports, generate jobs, revenue for the government, improve our energy security. But it's off limits right now. And until the government changes their mind to open that up for exploration and leasing and production, uh, we simply can't do anything. But we could really do an enormous amount right now if we were allowed to do it. Specifically, where would, you, where would oil companies like to drill if they could? Well, there's huge areas off the eastern Gulf of Mexico, for example, are off limits, the Atlantic coast, Pacific coast, and of course, Alaska. So uh, there's a whole lot of places that we can go to if we're allowed to do it. Uh, Speaking of things that are off limits and the Gulf, what is the status of the the drilling ban that was put into place post post Gulf spill and deep deep water horizon? And, And what's the status of those businesses down there and how folks are doing? Well, it's evolved from a moratorium to a permatorium, where basically we're just not getting permits in any significant numbers to be able to restart drilling activity. And so as a result, there's a lot of employment losses, both directly in the industry, indirectly in the terms of the suppliers, and of course the local communities. So we could really get a good chunk of America back to work if they would open it up. All right. So you think for the rest of the summer, though, the first number at the gas pump will be a three? Are we thinking that we're going to be in that range, the $3 range for the rest of the summer? You know, I'm really not in the business of forecasting, uh, but pay attention to what crude oil prices are. Open up your paper and divide by 42, and it tells you that yesterday crude oil alone cost $2.25 a gallon. Taxes are about uh, 40 to 50 cents, depending on where you are, mm-hmm. and then you've got all the other costs. So you can see why we got the $4 a gallon. All right. Thank you, John. As always, appreciate your time. My pleasure. John Thanks. Felmy, Chief Economist, American Petroleum Institute, here with the Morning Majority, 644 on WM.